Champignons You have the opportunity to see how mushrooms are cultivated on the largest Dutch farm though at Champignons. Worldwide on an industrial scale, people use shelf technology for the cultivation of mushrooms that's been invented in the Netherlands. Since the mushrooms don't have the ability to produce chlorophyll independently, a necessary condition for their growth is a specially prepared organic environment, that is, compost. In addition, it's important to maintain a constant mushroom-friendly climate. Humidity in the room is kept at around Egg Melange The use of conventional eggs in industrial cooking is inexpedient for two reasons. First, because of the fragility of the shell, so transport is complicated. The second, the shape of the egg complicates storage. Melange is a pasteurized mixture of egg white and yolk, and is devoid of such drawbacks. It's simple and convenient both in storage and transportation. The production of melange is carried out on an industrial scale at special factories. From the hen house, fresh eggs get on the conveyor belt, after which the equipment breaks the shell and separates it from the contents. Further, the mechanical separator separates the liquid from the dry matter and feeds it to the filter cylinder. Production of melange doesn't take much time. Almost immediately after filtration, the liquid egg enters the packing department, where it's poured into hermetically sealed packages. From here, the melange is sent to numerous bakeries and factories that produce culinary products. In the factory, which you see on the screen, they also make egg powder. To do this, the melange is dehydrated using drying or the sublimation method. Cheese. Each piece of cheese that gets on our plates makes a long and difficult journey from a special production farm. Everything begins in the barn where the milk is collected. First of all, it's pasteurized in order to kill bacteria whose presence is unacceptable. Then friendly bacteria are added to the processed milk. They contribute to its setting up. The next step is treatment in a cheese bath. In it, the excess moisture is removed from the mass and they carefully mix it until it thickens. From the cheese bath, the thickened mass falls on special equipment that forms chunks of cheese. It may seem that after this stage, the cheese is ready and can be sent to store shelves. However, it's not. Immediately after pressing, the cheese is a tasteless mass that resembles rubber to the touch. In order for the cheese to acquire its unique taste, it must stay for a while in a warm or cool place. This process is called ripening. The duration of the ripening depends on the type of cheese. For example, Dutch cheese has to stay there for two to three months. Swiss cheese ripens for about six months. The final stage of cheese production begins immediately after the ripening is completed. The chunks are cut, then packed, and already in this form are sent to the stores. Mm -hmm. 
bread. The production of bread would be impossible without flour. People have received it from ancient times by grinding wheat with stones, but for industrial cases, this method just doesn't work. In the UK alone, about 16 million tonnes of wheat are grown per year. It's planted in autumn, and it's harvested almost a year later in August. Special equipment is used for harvesting the wheat. Before the collected wheat enters the mills, specialists take some of it for tests to determine its quality. If the party passes the tests, it's sent to the flour-making facilities. There, the grains are washed and cleaned. To achieve the desired composition of flour, different kinds of grains are mixed with each other. Finally, they fall into threshing machines where they turn into flour. If the flour shows satisfactory results on the quality control test, it's sent to the production bakeries. As a rule, one plant is engaged in making a wide variety of bakery products – buns, loaves, baguettes made from different flour and with different fillings. The flour is mixed with water, eggs and various additives. From the dough, balls of the desired shape are formed. And after being in the oven, the products are cooled and sent to the packing department. Chocolate. Now you will see how rocket chocolate is made at the Red Hook factory in Brooklyn. Cocoa beans are extracted from cocoa seeds. They are quite big. Depending on the species, they can reach a length of up to 30 centimeters. The pulp contains up to 50 beans. Rocket chocolate uses a custom-made refurbished juicer to crack the beans and obtain a homogeneous mass. After processing, the cocoa mass is a loose powder and is passed through a grinding machine. Initially, they were created to handle spices in tea production, but Rocket Chocolate re-equipped them too. In this machine, the chocolate mass is being processed for up to eight hours, and as a rule, it's left there overnight. In the morning, sugar is added, after which the mixture is sent to special rollers. This is necessary in order to saturate the chocolate with air, as well as give it the necessary density. The next stage is hardening, so that the whole mass has a uniform taste. One of the final stages is the addition of fillings and various flavours. To get the usual bars that we all know, the chocolate is poured into moulds, and after that it stays there for some time for final hardening. The final stage is packing. Thus, the company Rocket Chocolate produces from 1,600 to 2,000 chocolate bars per day. Caramel Sweets As the basis, invert syrup or starch syrup is used for the production of hard sugar candies. The first option is more preferable, since the use of starch syrup may result in undesirable sugaring. They add sugar and water to the syrup, then mix thoroughly and bring to a boil. Hot caramel is poured onto the palate, and the liquid is distributed so as to form a uniform layer. As soon as the caramel cools down a little and becomes viscous, it's rolled and moved onto a special machine. It allows adding the dyes and flavors and stirs the caramel to a uniform, viscous state. The further process of production varies and depends on what kind of candy you want to make. A specialist rolls out the caramel and makes a big candy, putting the right stuffing inside. In this state, it gets into the rolling machine, where it becomes narrower until it acquires the dimensions of a conventional candy. After that, it's manually cut, shaped, cooled, and wrapped. 